Have you ever stood in a garden or walked through a forest trail and wondered, wait, is that a shrub or a bush? If you've ever used those words interchangeably, you're not alone. Most people do. But while they seem nearly identical at first glance, there are some subtle but important differences between a shrub and a bush. In this video, we're diving into the world of botanical terminology to unravel this leafy mystery and explain once and for all, what exactly is the difference between a shrub and a bush? Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. Both shrubs and bushes are types of woody plants, meaning they have hard, permanent stems like trees. However, unlike trees, shrubs and bushes are typically smaller and lower to the ground. They often have multiple stems growing from the base, and they rarely exceed 20 feet in height. This shared structure is why the terms are often used interchangeably, especially in casual conversation. But in botany and landscaping, there are distinctions. The word shrub is more of a formal horticultural term. Shrubs are defined as small to medium-sized woody plants that are generally well-structured, maintained, and cultivated. Think of the neatly pruned boxwoods lining a walkway or the carefully shaped azaleas in a garden. Shrubs are often chosen and planted for specific landscaping purposes, like hedging, ornamentation, or privacy. They're usually kept under control through regular pruning and trimming, which helps maintain their desired shape and size. Now let's talk about bush. While a bush is also a woody plant, the term carries a more informal, natural connotation. A bush is usually what you find growing wild, untrimmed, unpruned, and spreading freely. It has a more irregular shape and tends to look untamed. For example, blackberry bushes or wild rose bushes growing along a country path are excellent representations. They're not sculpted or curated. They simply grow where they please and take on the form that nature allows. So in essence, Every bush can technically be considered a shrub, but not every shrub would be considered a bush. The term shrub relates more to the plant's structure and its intended role in a garden or landscape, while bush is more about its appearance and natural growth habit. The distinction is subtle, but it matters, especially if you're working in horticulture, landscaping, or even ecological studies. Another way to look at it is that shrub is the technical term you'll find in plant guides and gardening books, while bush is the everyday word you might use during a walk in the woods. For example, a plant catalog might advertise a flowering shrub for your front yard, but your neighbor might casually say, that's a beautiful bush you've got there. It's the same plant, just different contexts. There's also a difference in how we interact with them. Shrubs are usually planted with a purpose. They're part of a design. They're selected for color, bloom time, leaf shape, or fragrance. Landscapers often plan entire garden beds around a group of shrubs, using their predictable size and shape to structure space. Bushes, on the other hand, are typically found in the wild or in areas where plants are allowed to grow freely. They might spread out unpredictably or sprout in places you didn't plan for. Interestingly, in some parts of the world, regional dialect plays a role too. In the United States, the word bush might bring to mind dense thickets or something untamed, while shrub sounds more refined. In contrast, in Australia, the bush refers to rural countryside often wild, forested land. So the way we interpret these terms can vary based on geography and culture, which adds another layer of complexity. From a botanical perspective, 
Shrubs typically have several main stems arising at or near the ground. They're perennial and live for many years, often with dense foliage. They can be evergreen, keeping their leaves year-round, or deciduous, shedding leaves in winter. Common examples include holly, lavender, juniper, and hydrangea. Bushes may fall into these categories too, but we rarely describe them in botanical terms unless they're being studied or classified. Then there's the matter of maintenance. Shrubs are typically pruned, shaped, and spaced for optimal growth. Gardeners might shape them into cones, balls, or hedges, depending on their style. Bushes, however, often grow without human interference. They might become overgrown or entangled with vines, grasses, or weeds. In some cases, bushes can even become invasive, spreading quickly and crowding out native plants. In landscaping, shrubs are often chosen for their ability to complement architectural lines, add color to the seasons, or act as living fences. They're part of the human design of a space. Bushes, by contrast, are often the subject of removal or containment. If a wild bush starts to take over a lawn or a path, it's usually cut back or even removed entirely because it's seen as disorderly. And yet, both shrubs and bushes serve ecological purposes. They provide habitat for birds, insects, and small mammals. They help prevent soil erosion with their roots. Flowering varieties support pollinators like bees and butterflies. Whether it's a well-trimmed shrub in a backyard or a sprawling bush in a meadow, these plants are vital components of the environment. To sum it up, the difference between a shrub and a bush is more about context than science. Shrubs are the garden variety, manicured, intentional plantings you see in residential and commercial landscaping. Bushes are their wilder, freer cousins, growing naturally, often with less shape and more sprawl. They may be the same species, but how they're described depends on where they are, how they grow, and who's talking about them. So the next time you find yourself looking at a woody plant and wondering whether it's a shrub or a bush, ask yourself, is it part of a design or is it growing wild? Is it neatly trimmed or is it sprawling out in all directions? That little observation might just help you spot the difference. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.